Good morning, family. Today I'd like to introduce you to one of my friends of the plant kingdom. This is Noni. And this leaf right here is seemingly one of the most potent ergogenic substances on the planet. An ergogen is something that enhances athletic performance. I've studied quite a slew of herbs over the years, and what I've seen this do, granted it's an animal study, what I've seen this do in an animal study is just unheard of. It's basically like steroids. They took, this is very cruel and unusual punishment to animals, so if you're sensitive to that, please change the channel. They took two groups of rodents, there's actually three, because they tested against green tea. They do what they call a swim test, which is basically they put the rodent in a bucket of water and they let it swim until it can no longer keep itself above water. And then they pull it out and they time it. So they took two groups of rats and over five weeks, they had one control group they didn't do anything to. They had another group that they fed noni leaf tea extract to and they timed how long they could swim until exhaustion. After five weeks of consuming noni leaf tea, the group that consumed the herb could swim almost five times as long. Imagine that, it's been a little over a month, you and your friend have been swimming, you drink tea, he doesn't, you can swim five times longer. I think it was about uh, four or five minutes for the control group and almost 25 minutes for the noni leaf tea group. That's profound. Um, what they basically concluded it was doing was enhancing mitochondrial biogenesis. The noni leaf tea group was actually increasing the amount of mitochondria they had in their muscles. It was substantially lowering cortisol so that the noni leaf tea group was staying more calm losing less energy to stress. It was increasing the energetic efficiency of how they were metabolizing and converting fats and glucose into energy. Now there's a lot of other profound studies on noni leaf tea, um, increasing glucose and insulin sensitivity, uh, really good for diabetics, weight loss, fatty liver disease. So needless to say, this has been the first herb that I've chosen to add to my diet as I'm coming back into the plant and fungi kingdom. Isn't this amazing? Look how it progresses. It has these tiny white flowers. They get pollinated and they start growing into a fruit. And then boom. Profound, profound. Over here I want to show you guys some other herbs we got going in the garden. Also started just adding um, started making a bone broth and adding a bunch of herbs from the garden. So, I'll show you guys that. Been super busy here getting ready for an event we're hosting. This whole garden bed is lined in comfrey, pretty profound plant known as the bone mender. Planted a bunch of strawberry in here. Many flowers and herbs I'm actually not familiar with. This is a form of dill, different than other dill that I'm familiar with. It certainly smells and tastes like dill. I believe this is either thyme or majorum. Got some leeks. Leaves. Over here we have sage. Some rosemary and lavender and a whole field of kalo. That's actually the uh, carbohydrate. The carbohydrate I'm gonna get on whenever I start playing with that. I have been playing with some carbohydrate cycling, cyclical carbohydrate dosing on this diet and that's been pretty interesting. But that right there, kalo is gonna be the plant that I choose to uh, really go into that with. Awesome guys, keeping it short and sweet here. Wanted to share that plant with you. I've been taking it, making a tea out of it, or throwing it in the bone broth, and just drinking it throughout the day. Getting as much of it in me as possible, because an extract is pretty much at least three times uh, denser than if you were to consume the cooked leaf. It's about 10 times 
less concentrated in oxalic acid or oxalates than spinach. So there's actually relatively few um, compounds in it that you have to worry about that I'm aware of. So the low oxalate content's pretty awesome. And so we actually have two of them right next to each other. So low in oxalates. And it's a pretty profound plant. It's basically known as an adaptogen. The fruit is also very useful, the root as well. Um, however, both the fruit and the root, namely the peel and the seed, have toxic compounds or compounds that become toxic after you consume too many of them. Um, but this plant can grow straight out of the lava field. It's one of the first plants to start propagating new land. And that's profound if you think of what kind of a personality or energy it takes to be one of the first to come out of the lava field. So that's Noni for you. Profound plant. Also has uh, UV protective properties. Um, antifungal, antiviral, immune boosting. It's just a profound plant. So, really excited to see how this one goes. I'm subjecting myself to consuming as much of it as possible. Since I'm not doing an extract, I can't really tell you exactly how much I've been consuming. Um, it would probably have to be around 100 grams of leaves to reach the level that they were doing in these studies. Uh, that's dried leaf. But I'm not being that finicky on how I judge it. I'm just putting as many as I can in my tea every day. And we'll see how it goes. I'm not really testing my swim time, but maybe my sprints and my lifts, you know. Enjoying it so far. It's already been about three weeks deep. So that, my friends, is known. You guys got experience with it? Ever grown it before? Insight or relationship with it? If you are not subscribed, please do. It does me a huge favor. And if you have any other plants or ideas you would like me to dive into, please share. And as always, guys, lots of love. See you in the next one. Peace.